Did you know that for the past many decades, tractors in North Korea have been an extremely important part of the country's agricultural industry? But what kinds of tractors are employed in this remote nation? And how have those tractors been modified so that they can thrive in the specific farming circumstances of this country? Since the 1950s, tractors have been an essential component of North Korea's agricultural sector, and their importance has only increased over time. Immediately after the conclusion of the Korean War, North Korea began to establish its own farm machinery sector with assistance from both the Soviet Union and China. The agricultural sector of the North Korean economy is still an important component of the country's economy to this day, and tractors became an important part of that industry. The locally built versions, which are frequently based on earlier Soviet designs, account for the vast majority of tractors that are put to use in North Korea. The name Cholima, which means thousand-mile horse, and is a reference to a famed winged horse in Chinese mythology, is the most well-known brand of tractor in North Korea. North Korea has made efforts in recent years to modernize its agricultural machinery industry. As part of these efforts, the country has started importing more recent models of tractors from China and Russia. However, because of sanctions and limits imposed on the country at the international level, the nation's capacity to acquire new machinery has been restricted. Tractors continue to be an essential piece of equipment for North Korean farmers, despite the difficulties that are plaguing the country's agricultural sector. Farming in this country is a difficult endeavor due to the rugged terrain and harsh climate, and tractors are necessary for preparing and tilling areas, planting and harvesting crops, and transporting agricultural items. Evolution of Tractors in North Korea Over the course of the last few decades, the advancement of agriculture in North Korea has been inextricably linked to the rise of tractors in that country. As a result of the Korean War, North Korea was left with an agricultural industry that was in ruins and a very limited amount of modern machinery. In the 1950s, the nation started manufacturing its own tractors and other agricultural machinery, and it received assistance from both the Soviet Union and China. In the 1960s and 1970s, North Korea saw a significant expansion in the manufacture of tractors, and the country developed a number of new models that were primarily based on Soviet designs. The Cholima 88 is the type that gained the most notoriety among these tractors. It was developed to be a flexible and adaptable multi-purpose tractor that was suitable for a wide range of agricultural applications. North Korea continued to build its own tractors and other agricultural gear throughout the 1980s and 90s, despite the fact that the country was experiencing substantial economic difficulties as a result of the fall of the Soviet Union and other circumstances. As a direct consequence of this, the number of tractors manufactured in North Korea decreased, and the nation grew more dependent on machinery imported from China and other countries. North Korea has made efforts in recent years to modernize its agricultural machinery industry. As part of these efforts, the country has started importing more recent models of tractors from China and Russia. However, North Korea is finding it increasingly difficult to acquire cutting-edge technology as a result of international sanctions and restrictions. As a result, the country continues to rely on the tractors and machinery that it has manufactured on its own territory. Within its own facilities, North Korea manufactures a variety of different types of tractors, including Kwangbok Tractor Factory. This factory is responsible for the production of the Kwangbok series of tractors, which are intended for use in agricultural endeavors on a more modest scale. These tractors normally come with engines that have a horsepower range of anywhere between 15 and 30, and they are capable of doing a variety of jobs, including tilling, transporting, and plowing. The Sungri 58 and Sungri 60 models are both products of the Sungri Motor Plant, which is a factory that manufactures a variety of tractors and other types of agricultural gear. These tractors are built for larger scale farming operations and are typically used to pull greater loads or work in more difficult terrain. Their design allows them to function more efficiently in these environments. This facility is known as the Cholima Machinery Facility and it is responsible for producing the Cholima 110 and Cholima 150 tractors. These tractors are among the most powerful tractors that are manufactured in North Korea. The heavy-duty capabilities of these tractors make them well-suited for jobs such as mowing expansive fields and transporting substantial cargo. Because of the many economic and political conditions that have arisen in North Korea over the years, the country's agricultural industry has been equipped with a variety of different types and models of tractors. 
The following is a list of some of the tractors that have been made available on a limited basis at various times in North Korea. During the early stages of North Korea's agricultural growth, the country placed a significant amount of importance on the tractors and other machinery that was imported from the Soviet Union. Specifically, the Soviet Union supplied the majority of the country's tractors. These tractors were employed widely in the agricultural sector of North Korea throughout the 1950s and 60s. They were built to be resilient and reliable in tough conditions and were used to cultivate a variety of crops. The Cholima 88 was a tractor that was designed in North Korea and first appeared on the market in the 1960s. It quickly rose to prominence as one of the most recognizable agricultural machinery in the country. The Cholima 88 was developed to be a versatile tractor that could be used for a variety of purposes, from plowing and tilling to transporting products and people. Its design was based on the concept of a multi-purpose vehicle. Tractors manufactured in China in the 1980s and 90s, North Korea started to rely more and more on tractors that were imported from China. These tractors were frequently more up-to-date and productive than the tractors that were manufactured in North Korea. These tractors included popular makes like the Dongfeng and the YTO, both of which were frequently seen working in the fields of North Korea during this time period. Tractors made in Russia in recent years, North Korea has turned to Russia as a primary provider of agricultural machinery, particularly tractors. Russia is also a major trade partner with North Korea. Farmers in North Korea now have access to more contemporary and effective machinery thanks to the importation of Russian tractors such as the Kirovets and Belarus. For the purpose of agriculture, North Korea makes use of a diverse range of different kinds of tractors. The following are some of the most prevalent types. Wheeled tractors. Wheeled tractors are the most frequent form of tractor used in North Korea. Wheeled tractors can pull multiple trailers at once. These tractors have been outfitted with huge wheels that are built to last, which give them the capability to traverse severe terrain and challenging farming situations. Plowing, tilling, and other laborious activities that demand significant pulling strength are typical applications for these machines. Crawler tractors. Crawler tractors, also known as track tractors, are another prominent type of tractor used in North Korea. Crawler tractors are also known as track tractors. These tractors have been constructed with tracks as opposed to wheels, which enables them to traverse terrain that is even more uneven or softer with greater ease. They are typically put to use for labor-intensive activities such as clearing land and leveling terrain. Garden Tractors Garden tractors are more compact and agile than standard tractors, making them ideal for use in gardens and plots of a more manageable size. These tractors are often outfitted with front-mounted attachments such as cultivators or lawnmowers, and they are utilized for activities such as landscaping, soil preparation, and lawn maintenance. Rice transplanters are customized tractors that are utilized exclusively for the planting of rice fields. Rice transplanters are also known as rice planters. These tractors come equipped with a transplanter attachment that, when used, can facilitate the speedy and effective planting of rice seedlings in rows. They are a necessary piece of equipment for cultivating rice in North Korea, which is one of the most significant crops grown in the country. These unique characteristics have been incorporated into the tractors in order to enhance their performance in North Korea's hard agricultural environment, which is characterized by rough terrain, severe weather, and a scarcity of resources. The following are some of the distinguishing characteristics of tractors manufactured in North Korea. The design of a North Korean tractor is meant to be uncomplicated and straightforward, so that it may be easily maintained. Because they often have fewer moving parts than tractors built in other nations, they are more dependable and easier to fix out in the field. Fuel Efficiency Because North Korea has such a limited supply of resources, its tractors are built to be as fuel efficient as possible. They typically come fitted with more compact engines that have a lower fuel requirement, which helps to keep prices down and lessens the nation's reliance on oil imported from other countries. Flexibility North Korean tractors are frequently constructed to have a great degree of flexibility, allowing them to carry out a variety of jobs by utilizing a selection of different attachments. Because of this, farmers are able to use a single tractor for a range of jobs, which can be especially essential in a country that has limited resources and equipment. Adaptability is a key feature of North Korean tractors, which are built to operate effectively in a wide variety of environments including those with varying degrees of precipitation and snowfall. 
they typically come outfitted with characteristics like as larger tires, higher ground clearance, and more robust construction materials to assist them in navigating difficult terrain and enduring adverse weather conditions. Trading of North Korean Tractors Because of North Korea's nuclear and missile activities, international sanctions and restrictions have been placed on the trade of North Korean tractors. Sanctions have been placed against North Korea by the United Nations as well as by a number of other countries. These sanctions include limits on the import and export of specific items, such as machinery, to and from North Korea. Because of these constraints, North Korea is confronted with substantial obstacles whenever it attempts to sell its tractors on the international market. In the past, the nation has attempted to export its tractors to other countries, especially countries in Africa, such as Angola and Zimbabwe. However, it has been met with major challenges as a result of international sanctions and trade restrictions. In recent years, North Korea has shifted its attention away from selling its tractors to customers in other nations and toward improving its own agricultural machinery business. The nation has kept up its own production of tractors as well as its importation of more recent models from China and Russia. Nonetheless, the nation's capacity to trade its tractors on the international market has remained constrained as a result of international sanctions and restrictions. In addition to their practical application in farming, tractors also hold a significant symbolic meaning in the political culture of North Korea. They are frequently used as a symbol of the country's self-sufficiency and agricultural ability in the artwork that is used for propaganda. In addition, the leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, has been known to ride tractors during public appearances, which further emphasizes the significance of tractors in the political and cultural character of the country. How far can North Korea hope to grow its export of tractors and other farm equipment? Will they still need to buy tractors from other countries, like China and Russia? These are substantial issues that will require attention in the years to come. If this knowledge entertains you all, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.